we can have a really nice casual conversation. I asked for a couch, but we didn't have any. We have the chairs. But uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the TikTok. Okay. So, okay. Okay. Uh, I would like all three of you to just go ahead and introduce yourselves, what you do, um, and what's the reason to be here. Uh, um, my name is Sarah Sutherland. I work with the Department of Wildlife Conservation. I've been there for about two years. I uh, came on in September 2020. Um, I'm our social media coordinator. So it's been kind of a hectic couple of years of rewriting and restructuring a lot of how we socially strategize. Um, the ODWC didn't hire a social media coordinator until we came on. And so it's been a lot of like change and cultivating a lot of change. So uh, yeah, <laughs> a little bit about me. I'm Katie Grant. I'm the communications director at the Wisconsin DNR. I have been uh, at the DNR there since 2018, came on uh, as our social media coordinator, moved up to kind of a deputy director position focused on digital. We launched our TikTok in early 2020, uh, and now I'm just overseeing all of the things because I'm crazy apparently. <laughs> And I'm Allie D'Andrea. I'm a hunter and an angler and a content creator. I create TikTok content and YouTube content and Instagram content for uh, RBFS Taking Fishing Initiative. Um, I'm based out of Jupiter, Florida now, and I work with a number of different brands, both on the hunting side and fishing side. All right, great. Thank you guys so very much. We're just going to jump right into it. I have eight uh, and I know a lot of people have been anticipating this kind of thing. So uh, let me ask you this. Both Oklahoma and Michigan have banned TikTok. How are you doing? I'll go first. <laughs> we aren't, plain and simple, um, at least not with TikTok. Uh, so we, it is banned. We can't have it on our devices. We can't access it on the web. It, you know, it's a bummer, especially from the perspective of we get messages all the time on Facebook, for example, of like, hey, check out this illegal activity. And I, as a social media person, can't even look to see like, is this legit? Is this in Wisconsin? Whatever. I just have to send it to law enforcement and hope that somewhere, somehow they can look into it. So uh, frankly, it sucks. Um, but what are we doing? We learned a lot from TikTok. Um, so we are looking at, once we kind of get back to full staffing, applying what we learned there to Reels and just doing the same thing on Instagram and Facebook. Um, the platforms are similar, there are differences, but the general concepts are the same. And we found that that short form video really clicked with our audience. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're still doing that somewhere. So we're still getting that uh, engagement. Yeah. Um, with us, so I found out about the band through Twitter uh, on a day off, so that was fun. Uh, <laughs> got tagged by some reporters being like, hey, what's going on? And I didn't know. Uh, <laughs> so that kind of came out of, I think, I can't remember who was the first governor to start pushing for that on a state level, but it has been banned on state devices on a federal level for over a year or so. So there's kind of like a presence in play here. So when that happened, we regrouped and our admin reached out to the, uh, I think the Lieutenant Governor's office, which handled kind of these situations and uh, they said it was fine as long as the state devices like no presence on TikTok. So uh, our foundation stepped in. So the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife Conservation has a foundation. Uh, they were able to step in and provide a device that we use for TikTok, which is running. And um, it cannot be connected to any state network. It cannot be used on any state Wi-Fi. And uh, just as an extra precaution, it is a device that is used solely for our TikTok account. It's not connected to any of my stuff. It's not connected to anyone's personal data. Um, so yeah, that's how we're using it by like just separating it completely and making sure that it's in a safe and accountable space that doesn't overlap with anybody's personal work. Katie wanted to ask you, we have breaking news. Uh, we do. So I'm going to literally read it because this just <laughs> broke yesterday. Um, so the White House has directed federal agencies as of yesterday that they have 30 days to remove TikTok from all government issued devices. Uh, in the guidance issued, I guess it was actually Monday it was issued. Uh, all executive agencies and those they contract with must delete any application from TikTok or its parent company within 30 days of the notice with few exceptions. 
Um, and then within 90 days, agencies must include in contracts that the short form, short form video app cannot be used on devices and must cancel any contracts that necessitate the app's use. So it's happening, whether we like it or not. Um, I have talked to the government people at TikTok and they've assured me that all of our info is safe. It's, it's all on servers here in the US, but certainly I understand uh, everyone's concerns about that. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens federally and, and what other states do. I think what you guys have done is, was a really interesting and unique workaround that you know, if you have the resources to be able to make it happen is a smart way to go about it. Yeah, we're really grateful for the foundation that was able to step in. Uh, we did ob obviously like present a pretty good case. Our TikTok account is a really big part of our social media strategy, even though we don't run any ads on it, we don't put any finances into it. All of our growth is organic and it's been a result of a lot of work and a lot of hours and investment. And so it was hard to just watch that go. And uh, I think when it happened, I like sat in the garage and just kind of stared at a wall like, okay, well that's over. <laughs> uh, just like, but just the happiest camper. But so it's really well, let me let me ask you guys this. You know, why is why is the fact you know important I think it's important why for, for those who don't yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, we started our TikTok account in 2021, and we, wow. So, as we all know, in the hunting and fishing space, is male dominated, and we have these old platforms with old algorithms. Our Facebook account is 12 years old. That algorithm is not going to aggregate any new users. We have an Instagram account that is 10 years old. That algorithm is not going to aggregate. It's not going to just decide to spit out, oh, young female users which is our value in TikTok. Um, so having a new algorithm, a new technology that uses AI, that's able to get further without me putting finances behind it uh, was really interesting to me. And also the female presence on TikTok is the majority. I believe it's like 68% are female users under 34. Um, so huge value there, especially in the fish and wildlife space. And especially for us when all of our content is only landing on like a male space and a male algorithm. And so uh, we wanted to start a TikTok account for the female interaction value. And on top of that, um, how we decided to do it was just by using its AI. So we put a female face on it and we made sure that there was one login, me, and uh, we made sure that we interacted with that algorithm in a way that it would put us in other algorithms and other female algorithms. So we interacted as a female. And we didn't really interact as a state agency. We didn't really interact as a um, kind of like this ominous flat presence because on places like TikTok that use a lot of data to make sure that your content gets further into an algorithm, you do need to be specific. Um, and so to launch that account, we were like, okay, we are looking for young Gen Z millennial female. And so this account is going to reflect that. So the software itself can do the work without us having to <laughs> struggle through it, if that makes sense. It's like, this is a really, really smart platform, and um, I'm impressed with it. I love TikTok. I'm a TikTok user. Um, I don't think this kind of technology and social media is going away. This is kind of just the first baby steps of whatever's next, so it's not going to be TikTok. This AI and fast algorithms that use our data are not going to I want to get back to that. I will bring Allie to the conversation. Mm -hmm. So, tell me a little bit about TikTok and social media. Uh, TikTok for me? Yeah. Um, I agree with what these ladies are saying that TikTok's a really powerful tool to be able to connect with a unique audience. Um, like Sarah had mentioned, other platforms are now aged. You know, we all remember the time when Facebook was hot on the market, it was the thing. Now Facebook has aged out and the next generation started to use Instagram. We're seeing that same thing happen where Instagram's now one of the old kids on the block and TikTok's this hot new app that everybody's using, um, particularly younger folks. But the demographics on TikTok aren't just Gen Z. Um, it goes well beyond that, millennials um, and older as well. So I think it's a really good platform to be able to capture a unique audience. I create content for all of the platforms, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. And 
the way that I think about it and treat each platform is different. The way that I talk to my audience on Instagram is different than the way that I talk to my audience on YouTube. It's different than my audience on TikTok. Each platform, of course, will have some crossover. Like some folks who see me on YouTube may also see me on TikTok, but primarily, I find that each one is different and each audience craves different types of content. Um, so I, I guess what I'm saying and to get to the point of your question is that TikTok is its own platform and creating content specifically for that platform is a really good way to reach these people. Um, let me ask, you know, we use social media as a, a, a term of, of outreach and also for customer service and a lot of like Facebook, private Facebook. Are, people would always have to answer to folks or message in all that kind of stuff. Can you do that with, with TikTok and, and that customer service aspect? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we, we weren't getting a ton of direct messages, but in terms of comments, uh, that was a really great place for us to engage, whether it was, you know, people taking other people and just saying, thanks for sharing, um, or answering questions, uh, you know, there's a thing on TikTok where people like to be the first to comment. And we would reply to those a lot of times with like a high five, like, yay, you were the first, right? And like, people were astounded that Facebook and DNR would ever reply to them. And that like made their lives. They felt like celebrities because the DNR replied to them. So we had a lot of fun doing it that way. Um, but what do you guys do? Oh, okay. So our, the, the, I really, okay. So I really believe that of fostering your audience is a part of customer service. People are very sensitive. The media literacy of Gen Z is a part of their social literacy. There is that, they, they exist post internet. Like their social cues are also embedded into like internet literacy and age. They understand the nuance of like, well, I didn't get a reply. Well, these people like don't comment back. These people don't follow up on their videos or information. Like it's very deeply nuanced and like to ignore that is um honestly offensive <laughs> so like it's a part of the customer service is to like be fostering a, your what you started and so with us our tiktok account is very much full of personality so it's kind of like a personality vehicle through a dwc it really humanizes us it shows a lot of who we are and what we do in the office like we've had wade who's a game warden who's gone viral um several times we've had like several just art secretaries gone viral like just people that we work with and sit around are like kind of seen as these little celebrities and it's kind of a funny account and it's just so nice that we can offer a place for people to interact with people and that's a part of the do you find that you have to do it more instantaneously yeah it does have to be organic because again the nuance people understand when you're like acting or when you're like posting something also my coworkers just hate it I was like, okay, here's a strip. Here you guys go. We're going to make a funny TikTok account. I understand. Um, yeah. So let's move on a little bit and talk about measuring success. How do we measure success um, by just TikTok? Wow. <laughs> Uh, there's a couple different ways that you can measure. Of course, there are metrics that we all love, um, the data. You can look at the engagement rates, you can look at the comments, how many people are liking it, how many people are sharing it. Of course, that's an indication of how well your content is performing. Um, there's also this element to social media that is a little bit unmeasurable. Um, and I'm going to speak a little bit more about on the, like working with influencer side of things. Um, if you're paying a content creator to create something for you, like how are you measuring what they're doing? Um, it sort of floats into this land of unknown because there aren't really key metrics and you can try and track it with um, trackable links and things like that. And those can help to an extent. Um, but I think it really comes down to knowing the person that you're trying to interact with and um, fulfilling whatever that is. So for you guys um, in Oklahoma, you're trying to like give the customer a, an outlet to relate to. I don't know if you guys have seen their TikTok. Actually, in Wisconsin, it was this way as well, so RIP. Right. But... Um, <laughs> that like Oklahoma's TikTok is so fantastic. 
it's hilarious. And like what you've created, what the office has created is this portal into um, being able to connect. So how do you measure that? How do you measure the success of like allowing your consumers um, to be able to connect with you? It's hard and it, it kind of floats into that no man's land of um, you just have to go with the feeling, which maybe sounds a little like you just have to go with the vibe. <laughs> but I really do think that um, you just kind of have to go with the gut of um, is this working? Are we presenting ourselves in the way we want? And are we connecting with the people that we want? And jumping in to go off of what you said there, you know, for us, we knew all along that it was going to be a long game. Um, for, for us, slightly different from what, what Oklahoma does, um, we just wanted to reach Gen Z in general um, because we knew getting buy-in with that generation now, early, letting them know that we were a resource, letting them know who we were, was the first step to being successful in the long run. They are going to be voters someday. We want them to care about us early and now. Um, so that was kind of where we were. So it was more of we were promoting this kind of, I don't know, like thing, idea, like rather than a thing. Well, yes, exactly. It's almost like fostering relationship. And how can you measure if a relationship is successful? I think exactly. you can. It's hard. You can. You, you can. said you can. Yeah, and, you break up. And, and it doesn't work. You absolutely can. But so the, the, <laughs> the quick story I was going to tell, though, is we knew that we were being successful when DNR TikTok guy, if anyone was at uh, RBFF last year and, and watched me present on it, you saw DNR TikTok guy. Um, he was at a Milwaukee Brewers game, just hanging out, drinking, eating a hot dog. And a group of middle schoolers came up to him and were like, oh my God, it's DNR TikTok guy. Can we get a picture with you? Right? Like super, super memorable. But obviously that had gotten into their every day. They were watching us. They knew who he was. Um, and that was kind of when it was like, yeah, this, this relationship has been built. People are paying attention. They know who we are. They might not be buying their own licenses yet. But they will. But they will. <laughs> and they're bought into it. Yeah, and I think there is, and, and now I'm kind of, you know, right, wrangling in if I'm going off on a tangent here, um, but I feel like there's another, wait, now I'm getting myself off on the tangent. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you guys this. You, you kind of touched on it a little bit. Uh, content creation, limited resources, state agencies. Uh -huh. Okay. I love this. Okay, so we make our, we make our TikTok in a closet that we keep all of our camera equipment in. Uh, the lighting is terrible. I do not, people do not recognize me because of how bad the lighting in our TikToks are. Um, never once has like, hey, stuff for the people that I work with. Um, that's, that's always fun. Um, but it's not the same as Instagram. It is different. So Instagram is like, if you guys remember the terrible time we were in in 2014 through 2016 at the rise peak of the Instagram girlfriend, Instagram boyfriend, where it was just like aesthetic only, that still exists, that algorithm of aesthetic only, pleasing. Um, if I log on to Instagram, you better show me something pretty and you better show me something pretty very quickly. TikTok gained popularity in the middle of the pandemic when people were at home making tie-dye jumpsuits. So like, it's not pretty, it's a harsh reality. And so what developed with in the TikTok community and also with how TikTok works and its algorithm is show me something pretty or overproduced almost as not see. Like you right. do need to queue up with like, hey, by the way, human human person and the human element is deep, deeper than almost like kind of influencer culture on Instagram. Well, so, oh, I'm sorry. Let me ask you. So do you you know, have to plan, I mean, do you plan ahead? Is it more instantaneous? Is it, I mean, is it, I don't think it is something you can actually plan ahead. I, like you kind of can, but a little bit, yeah, a little bit. Like if there's something culturally going on, like I know, that, I know that Rihanna was performing at the Super Bowl, So I know TikTok is going to be like freaking out about that. If I can find a way to sell a fishing license, which I didn't, uh, <laughs> it's, like I should, I should like, uh, have that created thought just kind of sitting on the back burner just while you're watching it yes. thinking like how can I capitalize on yes it? because yeah. there's a massive amount of content going up and if you can if the river of content is going and you can throw something in it and like it'll it'll take you further that way uh, what goes into your decision to join a trend 
Oh, I have a supervisor named Kelly. <laughs> and uh, I approach Kelly. And sometimes I know it's going to be a no. Sometimes I know it's going to be a yes. But I have to be fully honest and transparent with her to be like, this is the trend. This is the background. This is how it can be interpreted. This is what could go wrong. Yeah. This is what could go right. And then she makes that decision. So I don't think that should be a one person decision. No, no. as the supervisor <laughs> formerly, yeah. we were doing it. And it's very much, where is this going to go wrong? Yeah. How is the legislator going to call me yeah. freaking out about this? Yeah. How could it be misinterpreted? Yeah. Um, yeah. This goes into a, a, a great conversation because I remember last year we talked about the buy-in. Um, and so let me ask you, how did you get your state agencies to buy into, to buy into this? So for us, it was brand new. I mean, it wasn't brand, brand new. TikTok has been around since, what, like 2018 in some form? Favorly known as Musical.ly. Yeah. All right. So in, in some form, it's been around for a while. So for us, we had started kind of thinking about it in late 2019. Um, if you had asked me in like June 2019, I would have told you there is no way that I will ever have anything to do to, with TikTok, period, end of story. No, not happening. Um, we saw how some of the current events that were happening at the time in 2019 that were fairly complex were being broken down and we were like, hmm, maybe this is like a thing that we should explore. We have complex science things that we want to talk about. Let's try it. Um, and Fortunately, unfortunately, COVID was a really great time for us to reset. Uh, we had a little bit more time on our hands because we weren't talking about all of the events happening and things like that. So we were able to kind of play with it. And it was really, I went to my boss and was like, yo, I think this is something we may want to get in on. And luckily our secretary was just like, yeah, you guys are comms, just do your thing, whatever. As long as IT signs off on it, whatever. And so we kind of created the account on my personal device at first just to like get it rolling and see what it was and whatever. And then once IT gave the sign off, we just ran with it from there. Um, we were very fortunate that like, we didn't have to go to legal. We didn't have to get a bunch of other sign offs. It was just, you guys know comms, do what's best for you. How do you guys kind of uh, show the value? Oh, uh, well, for, it's probably different for Ali because it's a content yeah. creator. But. Yeah, I don't know that I would be the best one to answer that question okay. because I'm, um, I work closely with Mark <laughs> and um, the RBFF team. So they're handling a lot of the metrics and the like analyzing um, data yeah, internally. So I think that question might be better for her. For, okay, so for us, like, we don't use TikTok to advertise, and we don't use TikTok to try to reach out, even though it's already doing that for us. Uh, it's letting the technology doing its thing has, like, taken us very far. Uh, what I do like to use it for is to trigger those followers to move to our other platforms, because these other platforms are in older algorithms, they're in older ages. You can't undo a 12-year-old. A profile algorithm that's not likely. So we have this popularity in TikTok. If I have a TikTok that's going viral, I'm going to jump on our Twitter account and going to mention it and not link it. Do not link things on Twitter, by the way. Don't do that. Uh, Twitter will punish you. They don't like that. Um, don't link it and then convince people to go search in our TikTok so that TikTok goes more viral. And then when you jump on your Instagram account, because well, we are all connected dee -dee -dee -dee, uh, in our data, in our social media, um, it's going to suggest us because you have a digital history on multiple apps of interacting with local Department of Wildlife Conservation. And because of our TikTok account, it, which is 76% female, our only female majority account. Um, it has boosted our female audience in Twitter and in Instagram. That's like a big measure of success for me every time I see the bigger team. Yeah. Let me ask about, and I don't know much about this, so educate me again. Uh, sponsored content. Uh, how long are sponsored posts publicly available to see? 
however long your website you mean like ad wise I guess so, yeah. yeah so we, <laughs> we we ran a couple of ads um just before the ban happened um we tried running them with uh did we do hunter safety or hunter recruitment i think it was just buy a deer license we had no guns in it it was just blaze orange and they got rejected um for being promoting violence apparently um, so we ended up running a couple for CWD just to see what it would do. And it was basically just deer on the screen. And in terms of like cost per click and things like that, it was better than Facebook and our Facebook ads are perform ridiculously well. Um, but yeah, they, you can set the time period that it's going to run for, um, and it just runs for that long. Uh, Let me, uh, let's jump uh, to talking about content, content creation, et cetera, and influences. What do you guys look for in a partner um, from both sides, both from Ellie and from Yeah, I can speak on this. Um, I used to work for a hunting apparel brand, like 2015 to 2017. And during my time there, I managed their social media um, and eventually built up to the time I had left, I was their digital marketing manager. So I have some experience on the brand side of things, actually working internally um, to where I am now and what I've been doing for the last seven or so years, um, which is the influencer, if you will, content creation side of things. Um, so for me, every conversation that I enter with a brand, the first like meaning or, or the first discussion of business is really what what are your values where like where do you see the brand going over this next year what message are you trying to convey um and is there synergy here i think when you're looking to partner with a content creator it has there has to be synergy obviously it has to feel like a good fit um although that's not to say that you can't get creative and find people outside so like outside of the category in which you're looking for so for example if we're looking for um fishing content creators there may and shout out to monica for this um there may be opportunities to find creators who are more lifestyle creators um or maybe it's a gal who's in the makeup industry um maybe it's someone in the fitness industry who can go on a fishing trip and share that with their followers. Um, so there's ways to get creative with it, but regardless, there has to be some kind of synergy there. You have to believe in the person who you want to collaborate with. Um, and I think that having good relationships with those people is important. I personally like to get on the phone with, and if possible, meet in person, but more realistically, a Zoom call with everybody who I'm working with. And I wanna see the people behind the brand. And um, if I was working for a department, I would want the same thing. I would want to vet these creators and talk to them and just understand who they are um, and then figure out if there's you know, synergy there. Another thing that I'm just gonna jump into off of that, I was actually speaking with some folks earlier this morning about this, um, giving, creators the ability to create freely is really important there's some direction that is required of course you know i'm looking for a tiktok video um, that has to do with fishing okay of course there needs to be some parameters but to allow the creator the freedom and ability to create is really where in my opinion you're going to get the best product they are going to be able to speak naturally to their audience their audience is going to feel good about that they're like yes i know sarah i know the way that she talks this feels like a natural extension of what she normally is sharing on social media um so it's really critical to partner with people that you trust that you believe in to give them that freedom so that the partnership can be as the word authentic is used so much, but authentic. Well, let me ask you this. You know, a lot of state agencies, um, they're kind of afraid to give up that. They want to have oh, that yeah. control. Yeah. They want yeah. that message. So how do you deal with it? It's, it's finding really great content creators. And that can be a long process. If this might be something that you start now and it takes you six months and four tries. 
you might work with four different creators and be like, wow, three of those sucked. I never want to do that again. But then you'll find one and you'll be like, oh my gosh, like this girl's our rock star. We want to keep working with her. This guy was great. Like, you know, we're going to do more with him. Um, so it's definitely a trial and error process, but it does come down to the person. Similar to hiring, like trying to recruit good talent. You might hire someone who totally sucks and you're like, crap. You know, there we go. <laughs> um, it happens, but the, so taking that process really seriously. Do you guys want to add anything to this? We don't work with influencers at all, just because I don't think it's necessary. It happens. So. I, to talk to Ali's point, like it, it is important to find a fit, but um, it is there is space to be creative. So one of the people that we've worked with is um, her, her name's Mama Cusses, and we <laughs> worked with her. She's like a big parenting influencer she's like um and she's from oklahoma so one of the reasons that we work with her is just because she's a parenting influencer in oklahoma um she has like 2.4 million followers so it we're like hey i really want the locational algorithm to recognize both of us in our video and um starting to interact with each other through comments and then reaching out and being like hey there's benefits for both of us here so it wasn't even like a financial exchange like we came over we met we ended up having like a great day together and just hanging out and talking about like this is what a uh, wildlife conservation is in the state of Oklahoma this is how we do it and um, if you can as a parent team promoter like be like hey going outdoors and going fishing is a great way to connect with your kids and, and it kind of works so it's it's it seems like a little bit of a stretch from what we would normally do I feel like for Instagram and for our ads for things that we put money behind we want to get the best value and so sometimes it can discourage us from being a little creative and being trying something different but the trying something different has always um it's always brought more good than negative for, for us and i and i feel like especially in the government and it trying something different is like ah it was freaked out it's like blasphemy but um yeah uh trying something different through social media that's it's it's a great way to do that and people appreciate it when you try something different when you throw something new at them and you get the instant feedback oh yeah right? you, you know right like, away if the study starts work. to the wall yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's a really good point you know um let me ask uh what are there areas to avoid are there any things that i'm sure there are but you know yeah. let's talk about that a little bit um, one thing that just came to my mind is how volatile the comment section can be. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, videos that go viral, and this is for TikTok specifically, videos that go viral or have that viral trajectory, they tend to have the most back and forth comment section. And uh, the keyboard warriors do not go back. So that can be a little jarring. And um, I, although I think anybody working in social media understands how crazy comment sections can be, so maybe it's not that much of a surprise, but that's something that I think you kind of have to tread lightly where you're obviously engaging with the community, so you're, you're not going to stop responding to comments, um, but buffering it a little bit. I personally have no problem deleting comments. If I see a video and the comment section's getting a little too spicy, you know, kind of calming down the crazy stuff, but also the part of what makes it go viral. Um, well, I don't know how you guys handle that internally. As a government agency, uh, I think most, if not all, can't delete comments because of First Amendment uh, situation. So that's something where we just let it happen for us, our community across TikTok formerly and all of our platforms for social media um, is super self-policing. Um, so if you are out there being a troll, someone's going to come in and tell you how wrong you are. Um, so that always makes it a little bit easier when you can't delete and you just kind of have to kind of grin and bear it. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay. So for us, like we have a lot of, we have a dry personality on Twitter that works really well. And to do that same dry personality of like, Hey, I'm a government worker. I can't be rude to you but I can be dry and let you interpret what I'm trying to say. Um, I, uh, I was like, okay, so I made the mistake of posting a TikTok and it went viral, but it was about our popcorn survey. It was from one of our pilots from the popcorn survey and he like, just took a video of these popcorn running through Western Oklahoma 
it was really cool. You could see all just like very Oklahoma and very like super proud. I was very proud it went viral. In the captioning on the front of the video, I said, do you want to see the fastest animal on the continent? I should have said land animal because <laughs> every single eighth grade educated person came for me in the comment section. And then like these comments got thousands of likes for people being like, oh, the burger boom. And I'm like, I know, I know. <laughs> but that was in the caption, but it wasn't on the actual video. And just like that much of a difference was enough for people to like ah, <laughs> at me. And I had to be like, you know what? It's a Friday. Um, the video is going over well. People like falcons and you can like pronghorns. I think there's a capacity for both in this conversation. And then I just left it. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of what you have to deal with. Like let them have their own mess and be like, I did say land animal later in the caption. So that, that was my due diligence and then let it, let it go. Honest question. Uh, what's your definition of viral? Viral. Oh, wow. Um, for us, okay, for our account, if we get 10,000 likes, I wouldn't call that viral, but that is a really good video. Um, the next video will probably get 15 to 20. The next one will probably hit 30 to 40. And that's when I know I'm like, okay, we're going to have a video that hits a million views. So for, for us, a million views is what I call viral. And then it goes right back down. So it's like, it's cyclical. Like you can't hit a million views every time. Micah, my, uh, my boss is here and we posted a TikTok that was more educational and that didn't go super well because it was about zebra mussels and you know, who, how can you get kids to care about uh, zebra mussels? We're trying. <laughs> and, um, anyway, so it didn't go viral and Micah was like, you, you can't hit a home run every no. single time. He's like, there's other like aspects to the content and so yeah that's a do you feel like sorry i'm just yeah. gonna pose the question here Eric. <laughs> um but we ran into it and it was always the most frustrating thing the videos that you expect will do really well most of the time don't and it's always the ones where you're like oh this is just kind of like a crap whatever post yes. and those are the ones that like skyrocket yes the most frustrating thing ever yes. okay because i'm trying to look like a professional and <laughs> and these kids are just like Oh, wait, the game warden's cute. Let's make it viral, <laughs> like kind of a thing. Uh, so, so yeah, I wouldn't use like being viral as a measure of success because it can go viral for the dumbest reason right. that you may not want to take credit for. So <laughs> yeah. I, and I thought viral was like 10,000, so good. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have a couple minutes left. And I'd love to open it up for questions because I'm sure some folks in the audience probably have some questions. Um, I don't know whether we have our mic people in the back. But uh, yeah, we see some questions already. That's great. Just give me a second. Hi, really enjoyed listening to you all. Um, but it, it comes to mind as we sort of lament the demise of TikTok, if that's what's going to happen. Sounds like there's a lot of, you know, big organizations kind of down on TikTok right now. Um, like, there's always somebody on the heels of somebody. So if they are going away, what's next? Do you have any thoughts about who might, you know, who's next? Because I got to start planning. Mm -hmm. Who <laughs> knows? You know, for us, our initial reaction to the ban was let's do this and let's go in on, all in on reels because um, that's currently the easiest equivalent. I mean, YouTube Shorts is there. It hasn't really done much for us in the couple of times we've tried. I actually, well, I will say if the question is what is next, I. I think that YouTube shorts could potentially in the coming months, I mean, this might not be for six months, maybe yeah. even a year. Um, I ask you a quick question. Define what a YouTube short is for people who don't know. Sure. It's like TikTok on YouTube. Yeah. YouTube shorts are short form vertical videos, just like the reels that you see on Instagram, just like the videos that you see on TikTok but it's within YouTube and it's a separate category from their long form videos. 
Right. So our hesitation with Reels is that now Instagram has said that they're deprioritizing Reels again. So we've kind of pumped to the brakes just to see what actually happens here. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, if you are wanting to plan and think about planning, that's the space that I would watch is Reels and YouTube Shorts just mm -hmm. to see what's happening. But honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if as a result of all of the bans, TikTok does kind of split into two companies finally, or some other competitor copies it um, and runs with it. That's kind of one of, you mentioned it earlier, one yeah. of the beautiful things about TikTok is the algorithm is totally unique. Mm -hmm. um, I did not know that I really enjoy watching pasta be made <laughs> until I personally ended yeah. up on pasta talk, right? Like yeah. it just knows you in ways that you don't even know you. Now. Yeah. 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 Uh, we're, okay. So I really think YouTube shorts is probably, I mean, next we started posting YouTube shorts um, just because if you're, we're talking about algorithms, uh, video algorithms have to be able to take a lot of data and a lot of information and it does have age behind it though. So if you think about it, so you have like a mature uh, piece of engineering that is used to taking large amounts of data. That's like pretty strong. Uh, Facebook through Instagram really uh, knocked down their Instagram reels. They really knocked down a lot of their staff on Instagram when Facebook bought it. But YouTube has been YouTube for forever. And so it does have this powerful, it's a powerful company, especially for short-term video. So I wouldn't leave short-term video. Uh, that's gonna, that's like a new medium of education, mm -hmm. especially for people like us. It, it's how people learn. And people are already on YouTube learning how to do stuff. Like Ali and I were talking her biggest comment she gets is like, I learned how to hunt on YouTube. It's like, mm -hmm. well, we, we're gonna be on YouTube. We're gonna be there. So I think YouTube's the next. Let's try to get some other questions in. Yeah. I got one. Jen. Okay. <laughs> Big fan. Big fan. Um, so we obviously think that you guys are unicorns in the world and that there aren't a ton of you out there and we could never get one. I don't know. But, but is there such a thing as more Sarah Sutherland's and more Katie Grant's in the world that <laughs> could be hired at the salaries that state agency pays and how do we go about finding you guys? Uh, uh, if you can tell me, I would love it because I'm currently hiring. So thank you, uh, let's figure it out. Um, no, who, Peter in Ohio, I was talking to you about this last night. You know, I think the thing to think about when you're looking for someone who thinks in this way is specifically saying as a qualification I want someone with experience or knowledge of short form video specifically. It is such a different beast from long form. Um, we started, like I said, in 2020 and our videographer, Dan, he was the one who ran with it, but he had only ever done like five minute videos before. That was just the way that he thought about making video. Um, and it was really hard for him to make that mental shift to the shorter videos. So specifically looking for someone with experience and knowledge of short form, um, I think is a good way to do it. But if you... I'd, I'd say I was a weird hire. I came from uh, the NBA, like I came from podcasting, uh, taking a chance on weird people that you just yeah. like. Uh, <laughs> it's and like sometimes that's qualification enough because if you're trying to try something new, may as well have people that you like and enjoy and that it, in itself, that organicness is like, can take you really far. Like you can teach me to be a conservationist. You can teach me to understand the value of fishing and the North American model of conservation. You can teach that. And so instead of like looking for someone who's like signing up for your mission, look for someone who's just down to try something new. You know, and and that really opens up the skill set, especially within Gen Z and millennials, because we are out here trying to survive in a job market. They are willing to like swing the bat at like anything that comes at them. And so, yeah, just taking a chance on hire someone weird, you know. Super quick, I think there's value <laughs> in in the outsider perspective, though. Too, I when I started, I always said I grew up in a hunting and fishing family. I never did it myself. I don't do it myself. You guys go fish, bring me the fish. I will eat it. I, I just, I have no desire to do that. But because I don't know the stuff, I can ask the stupid questions and I can format the content in a way that outsiders then understand because I'm not too close to it. Um, so I think there is some real value in the outsider perspective from that as well. I think I saw another person question over here, I think. Maybe I lied. Oh, and over there. Hi. Um, what all 
this is such an important discussion, so thank you all. Really inspiring, too. Um, what all would you recommend, what advice would you give to state agencies um, to convince their leadership to not take themselves so seriously? Um, you know, I've, I've suggested having like a Twitter war about our bass fishing in Florida uh, <laughs> with should. Texas. You should. And, and uh, my leadership, you know, was like, no, you know, that sounds really scary. A war sounds bad. <laughs> um, Call it a beef. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And it would be orchestrated and planned, so um, I prefaced it with that. But what advice would you all give them to take chances and convince leadership to be a little bit more pr playful and take chances? I think, like, demonstrating that you're not trying to burn the place down really helps. Uh, so <laughs> and be like, this is my intention, this is my intention, I swear I'm not trying to get fired or get anybody in trouble. Um, and then being willing to explain in full detail to somebody that does not, okay, so, like, my chief of communications does not exist on social media at all. Um, he likes to go to Canada and be, like, just away in the woods. Like, he... So explaining to him our TikTok strategy can be difficult, but it is still required. <laughs> like, um, and it's still worth that relationship time and like being patient too. And we were talking about this though, like the for Fish and Wildlife Service, like for us, it that's a dream job for for people, especially like I'm a I'm a millennial. We did not get that kind of culture. Uh, that kind of work culture. There's not a dream job for us. A dream job is a job. <laughs> so we're like, yeah, this will be my new dream job. But for people in that other workforce, that workforce right above us, they like went to college to do this thing. They like wanted to do this thing. And so when you're talking to those people, you have to understand that there is a little bit of personal identity uh, closer to their job than there is like with my generation and younger and to have like that respect up front and to recognize that really has gone a long way for me to be like I, I respect who you are I respect what you're doing I completely um, I think we can still work together to be silly like so I think it's just it's just defensiveness if that makes sense it's like a posture of like ah that sounds scary so it's not you and it's not really TikTok but it's just like a cultural condition you got to be patient with um so yeah to get buy-in just be nice <laughs> be nice and be persistent and like demonstrate that you've put actual thought behind it and actual like research behind it and you're not just some girl with an iphone being like let's get a tiktok yeah i always approach it with I know this sounds crazy, but hear me out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know this sounds like an insane idea, but let's just try it. And I very much approach everything that I do in life with like, we are going to fail and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Let's try it, see what happens, we'll learn from it. If this is the worst idea to do this battle ever, let's just see what happens. And then we try something else next time. Right. And, and like we had said, it's the nice thing with social media, especially is you have that immediate feedback, you know, right away, did this blow up for the wrong reasons? Did it blow up for the right reasons? Right. So you don't have to wait six months to see, did this billboard go viral? Do billboards even go viral? I don't know. But, um, you know, what I mean? like, you, you know, right away if, if that worked. Um, so I think, yeah, that humility of like, I know you're not going to like this, but please, can we? I want to jump in too. I think being able to show them an example. Mm -hmm. So for example, like I've seen McDonald's and Wendy's beefing on Twitter. Mm -hmm. I love the idea of Texas and Florida beefing about bass on Twitter or on TikTok or wherever. That's hilarious. So if you can show them an example of like, or TSA, mm -hmm. I actually yes. don't know if they beefed with anyone, but they have a fantastic social media presence. That's like a little tongue in cheek and being able to show that and be like, look at how successful this has been for someone else doing the exact thing that like I'm suggesting here, mm -hmm. I think can help put the pieces of the puzzle together. And actually that just gave me, reminded me of, you know, we've been trying to do that for a while, right? And, and we're building buy-in with our programs and, and getting program leadership to be on board with it. And I was in a meeting a couple of weeks ago and they're like, why can't you just be as funny as Oklahoma is on Twitter? And I was like, give me more staff and I can be, right? So like show them other agencies who are doing it and eventually like I've been showing them Sarah's stuff for years and they're like, yeah, whatever, we're not gonna do that. And now all of a sudden they're like, well, this is my idea <laughs> and we should do this finally. So eventually they'll get on board the more they see it and the more the, they become comfortable with it. Also, if like 
that ever happens, if you do beef, I would like to be involved. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I love Twitter controversy, um, friendly controversy, if that makes sense. It, it has its own narrative. People, people get online on social media to escape work in their real life, mm -hmm. and if you can create a narrative that's fun, friendly, and educational, uh, there's wins for everybody around. Yeah. Any other questions? Awesome. <laughs> 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 really? Okay. Well, thank you. Great. Fantastic. Thank you all.